want to talk about mental wellness. I mean, like, are we really mentally fit? I don't know because a lot of people walk around feeling upset, lack of joy, in search of happiness, not understanding everything they need is within them. So I wanted to do this quick mental segment to go over how people reacted to the Kanye West, <laughs> Jesus is King saga that's been going on all weekend into this week. And he spoke specifically about mental wellness and mental illness. I want to elaborate on what we should be doing to be mentally well. A lot of things that Kanye said about, you know, health and freedom and trying to uh, relinquish ourselves from the slavery of society standards and old ways of thinking, you know, all of that stuff I'm all for. Um, I'm not a Kanye West fan or anything. I just heard so much controversy about it that I just had to do this quick mental wellness segment and touch on some areas that have affected my life also that he spoke on. Um, specifically, when he spoke about how people view mental illness. Now, I'm not an expert of any kind as far as in the medical field or anything like that. I am an expert of being a human with a mental illness that I am told due to technology and medical advancement not being there yet, I'll die with this disease or disorder or illness or whatever you want to call it, dysfunction. My brain doesn't work right. So what happens is when you're bipolar, and that's what I am, and also Kanye has been diagnosed with the same thing, um, it comes a time when you have to let people know or you do things that let people see that you're a little crazy. And it came from me when I was 22. I wasn't quite as old as Kanye. I was very young. I was growing up in an era where mental illness was just being heard about, like really heard about in the Black community and being spoken about in the lower end black communities. So it wasn't anything that I was aware of. I just know that I had a lot of things going on with me. I had too many kids too fast and my body couldn't catch up with all the changes, the growth going into adulthood and the fact that my brain was damaged and it wasn't functioning right due to a disorder that I had never ever heard of. When Kanye spoke about people ridiculing him turning against him, his culture leaving him and shunning him. I, I know exactly how that feels. And I know all people at some point or another knows how Kanye feels. I know he seems to be a lunatic is what everybody keeps saying. They're saying he's having a mental break due to his album that he dropped. I listened to the whole album too. Um, I watched the whole Big Boy TV interview and I did watch the Sunday Church. Uh, I, th I think it's a... A concert? I'm not sure what the Sunday church thing is, but um, it was all his music being played live in a concert, you know, kind of tight choir deal. It was pretty cool. I watched it. Uh, people are very upset with the record that he put out, and they're stating that the only reason he put this record out is because he's mentally ill. That That might be the case, but people are saying things in a negative way. And I want to take this opportunity to educate us all a little bit more on humility, humanity, em <laughs> empathy, and sympathy. All of us, to one de degree or another, are dealing with mental illness, mental stress, mental anguish, mental issues. We live in a slave-driven society where human beings have gotten too complacent and too comfortable with what we're being told instead of going out here and kind of being like Kanye and saying, hey, let me find something else out. He just so happens to find a comfort in Jesus Christ, God, Christianity, and a religion. Everybody has their ways of finding comfort. And when you're dealing with all of these adversities, all of these obstacles, all of these barriers that are purposely being put in front of us, to deter us from a happy, healthy life, it causes you know, frustration, which turns into anxiety, which turns into stress, which can turn into health conditions. Your mind and your gut are connected. So that's why I preach a lot about food, what you eat, how you should eat, and 
making sure that you're putting things into your brain that you need to put into your brain, which is why I don't watch television and I don't watch the news. I don't really listen to the radio unless I'm in somebody's car. I'm just not into those things. I want to put into my vessel what I want to put into my vessel. And so right now, Kanye is wanting to put Jesus Christ and, and the Lord and Christianity into his vessel. And people are judging him. And it's not something that we should be judging him on. I mean, if he wants to be a better person and this is the path that he sees is best for him, then why not support what he's doing? Um, he said people are calling him a coon and he's acting like a... a Uncle Tom. And, and these are things that people have said to me. I've had, you know, black people say this to me over weird things, I guess, because I've been friends with white people or whatever. I don't know if they didn't realize that my mom was white, but I don't know. I didn't even know what that word meant until somebody called it to me before this, this girl. And it was a couple of years ago. And I was just like, what, what, the, what the hell <laughs> does that mean? And when I found out what it meant, it, it it was something so stupid that I just laughed. And I was like, oh, she's very ignorant. And when I read the comments about Kanye and all the little things that people are saying, these are things that are being said from a place of either fear, ignorance, or jealousy. Something's an insecurity in this person to do this. Because when I saw Kanye, I saw a man that's battling with the same issues that I'm battling with. I saw a man that doesn't know where he truly belongs. I saw a man who is searching for a foundation for his family that is secure. I saw a man who was out here, you know, doing all this dirt, doing all these things to get money and it didn't, nothing happened with it. He, he just could, he ended up in debt overall um, with his soul, with finances, everything in life. He was just in debt and I related to him. Now I'm not a Christian or anything like that. You guys know I'm spiritual, but I could see past all of me and Kanye's differences. And I've never met this man a day in my life. Never been to a concert. I, I just, I'm, I'm not, y'all know I'm not a fan of anybody but human beings. So I like some of his music, but I just, you know, I, I'm, he's not like really on my playlist like that. So what prompted me to go and check these things out was because of the mental illness remarks that society is still making going into 2020. We're still scared to admit that we're flawed as humans. And as humans, it appears that we're still sitting here without empathy, without sympathy, and we're judging each other, knowing that good and goddamn well, we're going through the same thing. Even if you're not going through it right now, you've gone through it at some point or you will go through it. So it hurt my heart to see that people are still reacting to mental illness when the numbers are ridiculous. How many people have mental illness? Or how many people are taking medications that are causing them to be mentally insane through, you know, this induced insanity through the medications. We have to take these things into consideration. I don't agree with us bashing him. You can say what you want about his art that, you know, people talk about me all the time. That's fine. But I empathize with him being called names. I empathize with the fact that he wants to put out his art. And this was a vision or, or a feeling that he had, or maybe God spoke to him. I don't know for him to put this album out and drop the other album. But at the end of the day, he has a right to do that. If you don't like it, don't listen. I get that people are upset that he has, you know, all these complex disorders. I've heard it all like, they, oh, he likes Trump. Oh, he thinks he's better than Michael Jordan. And, and he, he wants to be in fashion and he's not a fashion person. And he's not a, okay. But you want to do the same. So I just want to say that we need to focus on the things that he did say that made sense and try to understand where he's coming from on the things that don't make sense. Like Big Boy said, just agree to disagree. There's a lot of things I disagree with as far as Kanye's approach and what he said and what's going on. And I have a lot of opinions about why this went down the way it did. But at the end of the day, I'm just another flawed human. I can't determine <laughs> what is going on with this guy because I'm not the expert of him. Who I am an expert of and who I desire to get to know more than any person on this planet is myself. And my whole quest is to help others like you learn yourself and become an expert of you also. And this is not just with health. It is mind, body, and soul. You need to understand yourself in order to evolve so you can let go of the things that no longer serve you and 
accept the things that are coming to you, no matter if it's good or bad. You only have a limited time to live here and to be on this planet with all of these things. It's a lot. So there are 10 things that I have to do on a regular basis to make sure that I stay sane. The first thing that I do, and this is what I, I've been doing since I was a little girl, is I write down the pros and cons of me. I face myself and I write down the pros and cons of me. And I have to do this. This is like a living document. You're going to have to do it often because you're going to always grow and evolve. And there's always going to be something you don't like about yourself. And the key is to love you no matter what. I've determined that once I wrote these things down, I'm not a good or a bad person. I'm just a human being. I understood why I had things about me I didn't like because of mistakes, immaturity, ignorance, fear. And I understood why I liked some things about me. So writing things down helps you to clear up who you are. That led to me to developing number two strategy of accepting myself. Once I realized, okay, you're not good. You're not bad. You're just a human. Mistakes are going to be made. My goal is to now learn from my mistakes. So I accept me for who I am. If I have a bipolar episode before I hid, nobody seen me. My episodes would last for months, months. I have been literally depressed for years, manic, depression, in and out of hospitals, just like Kanye. And I hid it from everybody because that's what I was told to do because it wasn't accepted really in society, but especially in the black community. And regardless, I got my white girl, back, black girl swag all day. They ain't give a fuck. People dog me out for being bipolar. And I get it. A lot of people are afraid to accept themselves and allow that acceptance because they feel like that means you're not normal. And I'm going to be real. There is no such thing as normal. The third thing I did is change what I could about myself that I don't like. And I disciplined myself. That helps me to make sure I stay on my self-starter path of feeling well. Um, example, lately, I haven't been doing my healthy hobbies. I've been letting work get to be too much and I've been letting negative thoughts get to overwhelm me. This time of the year, I, due to me being an empath, it's very hard for me to be around people because it's going into the holiday season and I can feel all the pain and all the worry that people have over shit that they don't need. And then I can also feel the pain and the worry over people who can't eat. They don't give a damn about the holidays. They just, they want to eat. And it's heightened during this time of year because of the you know, give and take and all the stuff going on in the stores and the marketing. So psychologically, they have people messed up where they're, you know, training us to be depressed during this time of the year. Depression will increase people's spending. Some people don't spend, most people do. So you want to feel better and it's all a ploy. So I just, I change what I can and I discipline myself so that I don't fall back into my old habits. I used to celebrate holidays. I used to hang out with certain people. I used to do certain things that no longer serve purpose for my life. And I had to learn to accept, let go of the things I don't need and stay on my discipline path. Um, I guess the best lesson I've learned on this five-year journey, because I started getting mentally better five years ago. I have a long way to go, but I do know that my journey has taught me that I have to speak out and let people know that, you know, we're all out here pretty much fucked up. And I noticed that people come around me and they're like, oh my gosh, she's got so much money and she's so beautiful and, and um, she's, she just got it easy. Her life is this. And they don't realize, like, I, I just learned how to love myself. So the fourth thing I implement into my mental wellness is loving me. And it was very hard to fall in love with me because it took me <laughs> steps one through three to get there. And once I accepted me, I learned to love me. And it made me a very, I guess, peaceful person to love me. And when I look at people, I don't get as mad as I used to because I realized like I was judging them and, and insecure and feeling down and, and, and low self-esteem was causing me to react in a way that was either depressing, sad, or angry. 
So self-love has taught me peace in my heart because I know we're all just human now. And I realize like we all kind of feel like we're in this alone and nobody else feels this way. But I find that through sociology and psychology and analyzing and becoming an expert on myself, I have actually <laughs> had an epiphany that we're all going through the same fucking shit. It might be at the same time. It might be at different times, but we're literally going through the same thing. And that's where my empathy and sympathy comes in versus before it was just me. I'm selfish. I'm out to be with me and, and you know, fuck everybody. I don't do that anymore. Self-love has allowed me to show myself how to love. That leads me to number six. I used self-love to get me, you know, better. And I didn't realize that once I learned how to do self-love, I would learn how to love others. So now that I know how to love me and I'm, I'm getting way better at loving me as each day goes by, I am now able to love others and understand a healthy relationship. And there was a, a piece on Mind Valley with Oprah Winfrey and a doctor and the doctor was stating that you can love your, your children too hard, too, too much. And when it gave the breakdown of psychologically how you loving someone so much and not loving yourself enough is abusive, it a light bulb went off in my head. And I realized like that's been my problem. I never learned how to love because I wasn't given love as a child. And being an orphan and going through the things I've gone through caused me to not love myself. Therefore, I couldn't love others. So whenever I thought I was loving someone, it was unhealthy love. And toxic. So discovering myself has allowed me to love others, which also brings me a deepness of peace. And Kanye speaks a lot about wanting to be balanced in things. And this really has balanced me to being a better person and to growing to the heights that I hope to grow before I die. I would like to really be a well-balanced person. That's my goal. My goal is not to be good or bad. My goal is to be balanced. Number seven, change your diet, change your circles. You might have to change careers. You might have to divorce, leave someone. You might have to um, take a break from your children. Sometimes change is good. Uh, sometimes it can be temporary change. Sometimes it can be permanent change. But I know that I've learned to isolate myself. I know that I've also learned to be respectful to other people's space. I don't take offense when people don't call me. And I do try to explain to those that I'm close to, well, they already know, there's no explanation needed because they know me, uh, that you know I need my space and they respect that. And I've also learned to let the past go. Um, it's one thing about forgiveness, but it's another thing to let things come back into your life that you no longer need. I avoid that now. Uh, I will speak to people from the past who I don't have regular interactions with these days, but I probably will never have relationships with them again unless the spirit of me and my energy moves me to, to do so. And so when Kanye was speaking about, you know, his family foundation, uh, isolation, how, how, how things are for him with his mental illness, I related to that because I know that once you start trying to shed, you know, things that you no longer need, including people, people really get upset when you try to set healthy boundaries and healthy boundaries are needed in, in any situation. And unfortunately, 
even like me, I had a guy this year, um, he literally just was like, this ain't going to work. And I knew it wasn't going to work, but I don't know, some insecurity, something came up in me where I felt I needed to, I don't know, hurt his feelings or make him feel bad. And I realized it was me and it was stupid. And he was right. He was trying to set a healthy boundary, but I didn't fucking want it to listen to him. I wanted him to do what I wanted him to do because I felt like, you know, my time was wasted. Now you do this. You got what you wanted, you know, but I, that's not the way to think. So separating yourself from people is something that you have to learn to do. And you have to also learn to accept when people are ready to separate from you. And normally I'm cool at it, but there's just been a couple dudes in my life. I don't know what it is. I guess my insecurities and my fears and my need to control and conquer has caused me to, I, I don't want to say about six dudes caused me to, you know, go the fuck off when they tried to separate or do some shit because it wasn't on my terms. So I have learned that, you know, separating, change, doing something different is okay. Even if it's somebody, a human being that doesn't want to be with around me and they want to separate from me. And just like with a job change, you might need to change your job. It might be time to move. You might need to downgrade like I have. And I live a very meager lifestyle. I don't play. <laughs> Y'all say I'm rich out here, but you stay with money when you don't spend it. <laughs> so I have learned to live a very meager lifestyle. And that has allowed me to pursue my business and my career and open this tech company that I can now help people through mobile applications with health, fitness, and wellness overall. And there's so much more to what we're going to provide our community and what we have planned to do to give back and to help others. Like it's, it's beyond comprehension. And soon as things unfold, more and more will be, be spoken on. But if I would have never took the chance to change my mindset and stop doing the things that no longer serve me in on my career path, I wouldn't be where I am today. Number eight, create healthy hobbies. Lately, I haven't been doing my hobbies. I've been working a lot. And I told you, I've been getting into stinking thinking and all that. And Kanye mentioned something about he's got his hands in a lot of bags and he knows a lot of people and he's manifested a lot in his life. And he said, you know, I might not agree with everybody in the room, but we're still all in the room. So there's something to benefit here. And I'm just paraphrasing him. It was, it was really deep what he said, because it hit me hard. And I said, well, that's how I am. Like, I may not like a situation and nothing's going to ever be perfect, but I at least want to be in the room soaking up the, the, the energy and the information because there's always going to be somebody smarter than me. So creating healthy hobbies will lead you to meeting people, opening doors, you'll, you'll gain resources. It builds trust when you go out and you're volunteering and you love it. You're not doing it just to get your company going or to serve a purpose of, you know, probation or to make it look good. You're doing it because you actually love doing this. And you're out here, you know, helping with fundraisers, helping with the community. You, I, you know, have friends who want to do clothes drives this winter and, and make sure women, children, and men have things that they don't need and they love doing it. And when they contact me, I'm like, oh yeah, I want to do it. But I have to ask myself before I say yes, is this a hobby that speaks to me? And if it doesn't speak to me, what else should I be doing? And some friends get turned down because it's not a hobby that speaks directly to me. So I decide what I need to do from the way the energy makes me feel. If the energy makes me feel like this is something that I need to be involved with, I will definitely get involved. But when Kanye was speaking specifically about doing things that don't move you and finding out what really moves you, letting go of all the things you think you're supposed to do to find peace, we're being confused with chasing money and chasing sex and chasing attention. And that's not what we're supposed to be chasing. So when I learned to have healthy hobbies, uh, it it changed me as a person. So now I know when I need to stop working and maybe do a video, uh, go out here and, you know, walk, run, take time to go to the park. Cause sometimes you can do too much where you're chasing a goal because you're trying to reach the goal and be successful, but there's more to life than trying to build financial success, building yourself up and finding balance for you. That's how you create mental well being. Even if you are deemed, you know, mentally ill until the day you die and they don't come up with the technology or the medical, 
you know, advancements to get us where we need to be to correct our brain issues. So healthy hobbies will keep you sane. It will help you to do things that are special to you that you find your own. And that's how art comes out. And that's why I said I, I could criticize Kanye's album that he put out. It was very church driven and I'm not into that music anymore. Uh, I did like the uh, song, Everything We Need. That was a cool little, you know, little thing. But it's just not my cup of tea. But I feel like he's moving some things out of his way to create space for what he feels he wants to speak about. And he has children and things. And so we got to think just because this man been doing this, this and this, he has a right to change. So you have a right to change. Just like I have a right to change. And change is really the wrong word. I call it evolution. We're human beings. We're supposed to evolve. It's what we're meant to do. We're not meant to stay the same in the same, same stagnant state. We're meant to grow and evolve and develop, you know, further powers, further intuitions, further knowledge further advancements for our people. Having healthy hobbies will allow you to really research in yourself what you feel you're being told to do. And right now, Kanye feels he's being told by God and Jesus Christ and Christianity to do this. Yes, mental illness may pay a, play a part, but what is that urge anyway? Think about it. Like, what is your urge to do art? What is your urge to go out here and express yourself? If that's the case, then all human beings are mentally ill to some degree because there's always going to be a person who doesn't like this other person's art or what they're doing. Uh, the ninth thing, you you got to understand humans and 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 get that we're fucked up. We're, we're, that's just facts. We're just fucked up. And we need to stop thinking that somebody else is better than us or perfect or we think we're better than anybody meaning yes there are some people who have different levels of talents all of us do but if you put us all together and we all vibe together and worked together and learned together and realized together that we're gonna always fuck up but we want to do better and that's the beauty about a human being we know we're inherently flawed but we want to do better. And all we're looking for is what better means. Does better mean that we're supposed to be Christian? Does better mean we're supposed to be in spirituality? Does better mean that you're supposed to stop eating McDonald's? Does better mean that, you know, we don't know. So we're all searching in a different way. And that's why I say coming together is what we need to do and stop judging each other because each person has information that each of us needs. Each culture, each race, each gender, age, it doesn't matter. We have information each other needs. So we have to stop looking and judging like we have with these comments about Kanye and focusing on his insane ways and the fact that he said this and he hangs out with this person and his wife did this. and So what? We all have these stories. The difference is a lot of us, most of us have these stories on a low budget level. So, I mean, honestly, so we're mad because this man used his insane mind to Basically, what he says is that he's a billionaire and we're judging him. That means that we're in his business. So number nine is really, really, really crucial because at the end of the day, mind your fucking business. Minding my business has saved my life. I used to be in everybody's business. Everybody used to call me. I used to think I was supposed to be in their business because they would put me in their business wasting my time. Now that I mind my business, I have 99% less problems. I just worry about me, myself, and I and trying to be a better mother and build a better family for my children's foundation so that their kids can have something to trust and be secure and safe in. That's the goal for me. Sustainable living. Everybody that knows me knows that. <laughs> I want to live on my own land. I don't want to go to the grocery store and I don't want to pay another electric bill or a water bill or anybody for any of my natural resources that I can get sustainably if I use technology and build my house and build my land correctly. It's just that simple. And this is a goal that I believe in. So when you're judging and you're in other people's business, it, it guess what? I would have never came up with this idea that I, I my passion is sustainable living if I wouldn't have let all the other things go and mind my business. 
I will get in business if you absolutely positively need my help and you're going to listen and I can advise you. I do not let people just rant to me, dog people out. No, you can say something that may be perceived as negative about the person, but you can't just dog them out or gossip about anybody. I have eliminated that because that plants seeds in my, my mind and my soul. And that brings bad karma to me. So I have to stop some people in their place and say, hey, I don't really think I'm the person to speak about this because it sounds like you just need to vent. You're not looking for advice or guidance. And I need you, you know, I don't really have time for this because I don't even know this person. Or if I do know this person, it's not my business. And some people get offended and some people don't. But I've learned to set healthy boundaries. And minding my business is one of them. And that is including with respect. Like, I respect you, you respect me. Coming to number 10, um, this one is something that everybody says they do, but it's hard to do. Finding appreciation in everything that you have in your life. Finding appreciation has helped me to get out of my slumps. Like I told you, I've been in a little funk the last few weeks. Not feeling my best self, not feeling my positive manifestation self. So that's why I got my manifest goddess on. I really do feel different when I wear and see certain things on my clothing. And that's why I came up with this line because I needed something to keep me focused. And so I'm very, very thankful for me being able to create something that when I wear it, it inspires me to be a better person. And every time I look in the mirror, I'm reminded, you know, you need to be a better person. And some of the slogans and things people may think is, is negative or, or they might think it's um, shallow and they're not. It's, it's a lot of meaning behind the goddess collection. And so I appreciate me having my brain <laughs> clear enough and healthy enough to do this and to come up with my own way to motivate me because even I slip. Nobody's perfect. And to sit here and judge Kanye, say all the things we're saying about Kanye. I, I'm thankful for Kanye for the message. If you really listen to what Kanye is saying about brainwashing, being in this society and learning on your own, he's really telling the truth. And maybe you're not hearing it because he's not able to say it in a format that you're able to receive. So try to try to agree to disagree and go research what he's saying. That's what I did. Some things he said threw me off. But a lot of the stuff that he said is dead ass right. And we need to stop lying to each other. When you become thankful and appreciative, you learn that you no longer need to lie. Nope. Because being thankful is something that gives you a peace where you're more secure with yourself. And every day I try to go through when I'm feeling bad, doing my stinking thinking, I'll go through a whole list of things that I am thankful for. I'll say, well, this, this, this is messed up. But then I'll say, well, this, 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 this is right. And I do that often. And it helps me to stay balanced. I make sure I find genuine love and gratitude in everything that I experience. I don't care if it's a friend that called for advice or allowed me to get advice from them. I don't care if it's a developer, you know, teaching me something new about my app. It, it could be anything. It can be the fact that my son, my middle son, he calls me every single day and checks on his mama. Like that brings me so much joy and pushes me through that. Sometimes when I am having stinking thinking, I'm feeling bad. I remember I got a kid who waiting for me to respond later. So I got pull it together and he may be in his twenties, but he still needs his mom to feel okay. And that is something I'm very thankful for. It, 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 it's all around you. And so I have a friend online and I won't say his name, but I sometimes we get to counseling and he lives in another country and talking about life. And so he gives me a lot of information. I give him a lot of information and we became vibe buddies. Like we're really vibe buddies. And I appreciate that relationship because some things that we promise to each other as bi buddies, I'll be in my stinking thinking and I'll say, wait a minute, my bi buddy might need me to get on that DM tomorrow. <laughs> so let me get my shit together. Appreciation will solve a lot of your problems. 
And it all stems from self-love, learning to love, and finding discipline and balance in your life. These 10 things have helped me, and I'm learning more techniques, which we will share through these videos, through the mobile applications, and through some other outlets and platforms that we have coming in 2020. I feel like mental illness is a serious, serious condition that a lot of people live with that we're acting bougie as fuck about. We are all crazy to one degree or another. So let's have empathy and understand that you need to talk to somebody. You don't have to talk to me. I'm here. I, I do free consultations. I do have a 30-day program that is a self-discovery program. If you really want to do this, we can do this. And the only thing that I'm charging for is for the materials that I have to use to get you through this. It's a very inexpensive, very affordable I'm not getting nothing off of it, agreement, because I want to help. It's a package that includes everything you need. You even get daily interaction from me every single day. And like I said, it's only 30 days. It takes 30 days to make a habit. It takes 30 days to break a habit. I promise you, you can do it in 30 days. When they say you can change like that, and what did we say we're going to use the word? evolution. So going into 2020, the word is going to change from change to evolution. You're going to evolve. You're going to evolve just like that. And then that's going to inspire you to do more. But if you do need some help and especially professional help, go to betterhelp.com. They have an app. Technology is kicking ass out here in the medical industry. You guys, we, we are all teaming up together trying to get people healthy because being healthy is most important, honestly. Because it's hard to love your family and to provide and, and to enjoy life when you're not healthy. So betterhelp.com has professionals. They also have a LGBTQ site called pridecounseling.com. They will speak to you. You can text them. You can video chat. They'll refer you over to psychiatrists. All of that. Because you need to stop thinking that mental illness is something that only other people get. It is ser It is serious. When it comes time to break down and have that mental break, some of this stuff is permanent. Some of it isn't. How many of you have basically spazzed out breathing in the bag and you don't know why and you go into the hospital because you thought you were going to have a heart attack? Millions of us. <laughs> Millions. Probably billions. So we need to start helping each other by minding our business and not judging and getting ourselves help becoming self-aware, minding my business and worrying about me and making sure that I am the best me I can be is the best thing that I can do for society. Like Kanye says, fuck what people think because you think what I think and we're all thinking the same bullshit and it's not helping us. So we need to come together and understand it doesn't matter. None of the things that we are doing matters. It just doesn't. Stop the stinking thinking. Find you balance somewhere in your life. Develop healthy hobbies some kind of way. Let go of these people telling you this is what you have to do to make it. Because so far, everything that I've done to try to make it to money has not worked. Everything I've done to try to better myself, to get me closer to a family foundation that is stable for the future children, to find those who are more like me and attract people who are like-minded and also smarter than me to guide me, those things are happening every single day. Now I have opportunities to go out here and really help people. So yes, we have to make money, but we are forgetting that money is a tool to be used as such. It's just a tool. It doesn't hold value the way that we're out here working for it. We are cogs in an American system that is teaching us to hurt each other just so we can go get a bunch of nothing. Nothing. Once you see the beauty in what Kanye West, Jim Carrey, and others like them who have been on these journeys of self-discovery, and they come out different and weird afterwards, so everybody's saying, again, I've been called different, weird, all of that. That's why we're all about the unicorns. Because... Obviously, insane people are awesome. 
because we're out here doing it and having fun with our lives. So I guess that makes us the unicorns. And even though we have our bad days, we're learning how to balance those days out. And we want to share this information with people like you who are saying, I'm sick of this shit. I'm tired. I don't want to do this no more. What else is there? What can I do? Why? Why me? Why do I deserve this? We've all said that. We've all cried and we've all been mad and we've all done bad things. We've all done good things. Now it's time to do the things that you feel move you. And that's what I do. I may not go out with friends often because it doesn't move me. And my friends, if you're a real friend, you'll understand that. It doesn't move me. I'm not a party girl type. I used to go out and uh, dabble in it, but I'm not there anymore. I have other interests. And it's okay for me to say that. It's okay for you to let go of the things that no longer serve you. So try your best to figure out who you are. Find what makes you feel joy. Happiness is not real. Happiness is something that I guess the world has created, man has created, and we go out here and spend money, have sex, and go get married and buy all these things and do this bullshit, thinking that it makes us happy and it never makes us happy. I know so many women with plastic surgery, so many men out here with fucking $100,000 cars and they're not happy. So it's not a real thing. Joy is actually real. And we use these words, but we don't understand the meaning. And I'm just now understanding the meaning of happiness versus joy. So on the next segment of mental wellness, I am going to speak about why telling the truth is so important and how that directly correlates with you receiving joy in your life. There are so many aspects to building yourself up to be a better brighter, more enlightened person. But I will say money is the least of it. Money means nothing. What you wear means nothing. Who you shop with means nothing. None of that means nothing. And that's where I feel a lot of people are judging Kanye because I agree with him. It means nothing. Yes, we need money. Yep, I need money to go and get my sustainable property that I want to have. I do need money for that. But I don't need to go out here. I, I have a plan that's so, so smooth. I don't need to go out here and directly violate, hurt, or sell my soul to the devil like Kanye said. I've already done all that. I just did it on a lower level. And like he said, it didn't get nobody nowhere. And it didn't. So now I have an opportunity to take a path similar to his, where it's more of a spirituality path, and go out here and reconnect with Mother Earth, its people, and its nature. And I want to be one with the universe. So find your goal. Stick to that goal. And remember, it takes 30 days to make and break a habit. I love you guys. You need to learn to love yourselves. Please, please, please love each other and stop judging and learn what the hell empathy actually means. Thanks for joining me on my first wellness segment. And I hope to be talking to you guys. Make sure you shoot me up on my DM if you have any consultation questions or if you need any advice. I'm here for you guys. Be here for yourself.